Yo. We just people from the north side. Once the Timmy's hit the shore fine. Went to ready on the four ties. Heavy traffic during four five. Gotta hustle on your own time. Color people every port side. We just people from the north side. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your host, your boy, George McKay, back here again, backstage at CWF Resolution. And I'm sitting down with the man, the myth, the legend, Sin Bodhi. Hello, Earthlings. Hello. I come in peace. Sid, thank you so much for sitting down with me, man. You are a legend in this business. Oh, Somebody, oh, you go are, on. you are, you're a fantastic human being. I'll let you count the ways. Okay, yes, you are a fantastic human being or a fantastic alien, however you want to put it. I want to talk to you about one of the people that you know as a big influence in your career. That would be Scott Demore. Scott Demore, Border City Wrestling. He wrestled a lot of shows. He did stuff work at TNA as well, and now he's bringing back Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling. What are your thoughts on that? revitalizing that phoenix from the ashes in pro wrestling especially here in ontario so i think that is a classic wrestling show and who doesn't love a comeback everybody and uh scott uh mr demore the archie bunker of sports entertainment as i like to refer to him <laughs> is uh he's he's a genius evil genius good guy genius he's actually a really great guy nobody he doesn't he doesn't like when anybody kind of stooges that off to planet earth but he's a nice guy um I think he cares about the talent. Uh, he's got a great wrestling mind. If he's got the pencil, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. And when you look at how he took TNA from almost obscurity, literally running on their last life, and again, Phoenix rising from the ashes, I mean, this has tailor-made comeback Scott Demore successes all over it. You talked about his wrestling mind. What do you think makes Scott Demore so innovative in pro wrestling? Especially when everything's been done, how can he take the same story but just make it fresh? So I think, you know, I will dare humbly, uh, not humbly, put myself in this category of that unicorn age of uh, Scott and I and, and uh, not a whole lot of others are in that weird age where we got to wrestle and be around and be in the locker room full of like those 1980s legends, you know, and but we're still young enough that we can get down in the ring with the new guys. And, and um, so Scott got all this knowledge you know, from your Terry Taylors and your Tracy Smothers and just the list goes on and on. You know, there's just uh, too many to, to list from Sabu to just on down the line. So he learned, you know, and that's how I learned. Um, he did it more as a, a booker where I was also a booker, but I was more of the time in the ring where he was more of the backstage guy. Uh, now, either way, um, so like how I came up was you know, if I'm just this new guy, but I was big enough, I looked interesting enough, so I was sort of a, a cost-effective bet to put in the ring against a, a Kamala, a Greg Valentine, a Steiner Brothers, whoever. Uh, and so that way, any promoter didn't have to spend the money on two former WWF guys or whatever. They could spend the money on one, you know, whoever it was, a Tito Santana, whoever, and then little old me. And I didn't look like a meal being fed to a Tito or uh, whomever, King Kong Bundy, etc. Um, I looked like a worthy opponent, but then I was happy to do the favor. The fans go home with smiles on faces, boom, bada, bing. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't help but learn, 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 and learn. I think Scott was in that same position. You know, um, he's been all over the world. He's wrestled with the biggest companies. He just, again, like me, and I look up to Scott. He's a good dude, and he's my senior in the ring and in the locker room. Um, he just accrued knowledge, and he knew what to do with it he knew how to twist it and morph it and blend it and tie it together and duct tape it and and, and all that to, to make his own new innovative ideas and i always have taken inspiration from that from scott i love that i think that's a great answer but you're no slouch as well your world traveled you've been around oh. oh come on you've been around like dude you literally were in tna in its highlight days you worked for wwe as well sin bodhi is a legend in pro wrestling and i want to know WWE Hall of Fame, everybody talks about that. Yeah, okay, great, it's a Hall of Fame. But what about here and home? Do you not feel that we should have something like the Ontario Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame? I mean, there's pockets of it, but do you not think we should have something here where everyone that's put their blood, sweat, and tears, especially in this territory, which for so many years was thriving on its own without having the big dogs come in? Do you not feel that we deserve that? I feel like you're on top of the list for that, in my honest opinion. Well, I appreciate that very much. I think... Canadian pro wrestling has always been special mm -hmm. and it's historic 
and there's been so many wonderful performers, guys and girls, to come out of Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would be thoroughly flattered to be recognized by anybody for anything, let alone, you know, um, whether it's coaching or, or, or actually wrestling or what have you. But I think the, for me, my answer is, is this is going to kind of go in a, in a slightly different direction, but um, I think, like what you said about, you know, there's so many different shows and all these things. I think that is similar everywhere. Like there's these little multiverses all over. You know, you go to Detroit, there's a bunch of shows. You go to Toronto, there's a bunch of shows. You go to... Louisville, you go to Tampa, you go to Las Vegas, wherever you are, there's always these kind of different size shows and sometimes they don't get along so well. And I just think if all of these shows were to use the word that is etched in pro wrestling, brother, brotherhood, Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's hard enough to be successful when you're working together, let alone when you're fighting each other for scraps. So I think whether it's the Ontario scene, the maritime scene, uh, West Coast scene, Canadian scene, you know, Michigan, Ohio, Florida, wherever. I think all those places should become their own uh, little ecosystems instead of a bunch of little warring places. Be like, oh, I'm going to go wrestle at XYZ on a Friday, and then ABCD on a Saturday, and then XYZ on a Sunday, and make a loop out of it. Where, God forbid, wrestle every night of the week like the territory days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that way, if you're not busy. MFing each other's shows, you might actually be productive. You might actually learn more. You might actually get in there with more experienced talent. You might grow your individual brand, and you might uh, just put some smiles on some wrestling fans' faces, and they might deserve that on this planet. Absolutely, I think that's I think that's a fantastic answer to a, a a very a question that could go in so many different multiverses, as you put it. Very very insightful. Edge and Christian, I want to talk Edge and Christian. Those jerks, yeah. yeah those about- yeah, those two fucking dicks. No, I love those guys. Uh, I'm a, I'm big pro on Canada. I'm big pro on on the heritage of pro wrestling in Canada and everything like that. I just really am. I want to pick your brain about traveling the road with these guys, growing up in an era where that generation was so special. Well, those two guys, wrestling or otherwise, are my brothers. They're as close to me as my blood brother. Um, they're just good humans. And whether they decided to be wrestlers, or, you know, whether they were going to be a hairstylist or a firefighter or a whatever, they would have done great. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just talented, smart, kind. Um, so they chose wrestling, and, and, and then wrestling chose them. And you as well. Wrestling chose you? Or did you just kind of fall into wrestling? I mean, you don't just decide to become a pro wrestler, wake up in the morning and say it's going to happen. You've got to love it. Or you gotta hate it. It's there's no in between. I find with pro wrestling, there's no gray area. You're either passionate about it or it's just a job for you. Gangrel uh, always says this, and I, he's another good friend of mine. I really respect and love him. And he would say that wrestling owes me nothing. I owe it everything. Mm-hmm. Without wrestling, you know, maybe I'd just be asking people if you want fries with that. I don't know. I don't know. And which is awesome. That's a, a, a le, like legit jobs and the people that make the world go around. That's who we as wrestlers aspire to. Entertain, Absolutely. you know. I think living the life that I've lived, I might be too weak to not go postal in a week of, you know, putting up with customers and doing this and doing that. And I, I think it's a massive release to be in the ring and get to do what we do. Mm-hmm. But the privilege is putting smiles on the faces of all of those waitresses, truck drivers, accountants, uh, factory workers, teachers, and so forth. Like that is just the ultimate. That's that is my championship belt. It's just seeing kids hooting and hollering and watching people just expend their energy. Like, where else in, on planet Earth can you go and just yell and boo and cheer without getting in trouble? You can't yell at your husband or your wife or your boss or your employee or your neighbor or whatever without there being, you know, without the cops being called. But here, you ah, you suck, I hate you. Ah, you can yell, you can cheer, woo, 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 as guys are getting chopped, you know. You can just let it all out. And again, on this planet, I think people deserve to be able to let it out, and that's, I think, what wrestling gives us. And... uh just smiles on faces that's the ultimate ultimate championship belt absolutely i am in the same predicament when i say wrestling literally saved my life i did not have the greatest upbringing and pro wrestling was always that much needed distraction See, that had, pulled me out of that world i had great parents and i still turned out like this <laughs> but you know what i feel like when you can entertain and and so many incantations of sin Bodhi, you're not just who you are now you you definitely went through trials and tribulations to figure out who Sin Bodhi is. When I look at Sin Bodhi, I feel like he's a cross between if Kamala and Mick Foley had a one night stand, Sin Bodhi would be that love child, if you will. You know, kind of a Papa Shango meets Mick Foley meets the Raven. I mean, you feuded with Raven. So, I mean, when you look at everything, 
that Sin Bodhi has accomplished in his career and all the incantations of this larger than life character. And you sit back and do you ever sit back sometimes when you're on the road or you're driving, you're just stopping at a stoplight. And you're like, fuck man, I have been through, I have done some shit. Um, so if I, if I'm tooting my own horn in front of my wife or my daughter, uh, <laughs> I think my wife always refers to me as the Rocky Johnson in the in the, the Rock TV show. What's the, the what's that called? Um, Young Rock. Young Rock. Yes, yes. And she's uh, she just like she we're sitting there and she's watching uh, Rocky Johnson. Well, I did this and I did that, you know, whatever. And she just looks at me. And I'm like, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> um, I, I don't I don't know how to answer that. It's uh, it's, it's a silly ride. Uh, I'm happy to entertain people. Yes. And I, the character is is larger than life. Are you are you kind of are you wanting to know like why or how I change? What, what I'm I'm just saying the the, the just the, the you're well traveled. Yeah, yeah. You're in that stage where you could still know the history, but still mix it up with the young guys. Sure. But when you look back at your career as a whole, it's like damn, I've I've had staying power. So I kind of think about stuff how I'm told. I've never met Andy Kaufman. I know wrestlers who wrestled Andy Kaufman, but. Um, I was always under the impression that Andy didn't perform and was wondering if any certain bit was going to get over with the fans. He just thought all these hardworking people, they're in their set areas and whatever. He is the traveling bear. You know, he is the dancing bear that's getting to see all these things, as am I. And as you travel and you sort of get desensitized to certain things and excuse me, and you see different things. So you're, you're a harder sell than the average bear because you're just more traveled than the average person because they're just busy doing real work, taking care of real families, doing right. real life things. Right. So I just feel like, as Andy Kaufman did, that if it amuses me and I'm a harder sell, it'll probably amuse the good, hardworking folks of planet Earth. So that's how I kind of look at it. Like if I can amuse myself, if this would make me go, hmm, or okay, or giggle, or get mad or happy or whatever, then I'm okay. <laughs> All right, then, then I'll unleash it on the earthlings. Absolutely. And my final question, both being girl dads, I'm a proud girl dad of two daughters. You mentioned your daughter as well. When you look at, um, uh, this is, I guess, an advice question for me because my one daughter's 15. My other daughter is eight. I don't know how, how old is your daughter? 16. 16. Okay. So going, we're in the same boat. On, going on 30. 25. Yeah. hundred percent. So dating is happening. Uh, so as far as I know, not, not yet. I not mean, yet. she is always been like a little dance girl and then now and for a few years now she's really her heart has been in, in playing music and stuff so uh my wife and i keep her so busy to avoid idle hands you i know? like that um, idle hands are the devil's playground hell yeah that was jake the snake would always tell me that he's like brother i got in trouble when i got bored my brain went crazy when i got bored yeah so we just make sure my kid is not ever bored and um yeah uh Aren't you excited if somebody comes knocking on a door wanting to take her out for a cup of coffee oh, that dude. you could you think about all the fucked up shit oh. you could do. So another <laughs> another wrestler friend of a, a mutual friend of both me and Edge, um, they uh, he's a stepfather. Good dude. Just a great dude. Uh, Elvis Elliott. Yes. Elvis Osborne. And he's a stepfather to a wonderful uh, young man and a, and, a, and a daughter. He's got a step boy, a stepson and a stepdaughter. And the first time that uh, she was going on a date, and again, for the people that don't know who Elvis Elliot, Elvis Osborne is, is kind of looks like me, but scarier. Bigger, double mohawk, beard to his belly, about 280 pounds. And so him and I and Edge all answer the door. This little blonde boy is standing at the door, not understanding anything about being on planet Earth at this point. Like, what do you want? You come here to see Rachel. What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna? Go? Why are you? Blah, blah. And he says, ah, "Well, we could just stay here." And she can walk. Away. Leave him alone, you jerks. You know whatever. And she busted by us or whatever. But yeah, I dreaded and looked forward to that day. And uh, weirdly, I remember this. This was a phone call uh, a few years back now. But you know, Edge and I, when we were younger, we were always chivalrous. But if we went out to the clubs and whatever, we would kind of, you know, go hanging out, looking to party and whatever and all that so when we were younger you know and we were always chivalrous to girls but we were still out having a good time you know whatever and uh so now that we are both dads of girls he called me one day and we were just shooting the the, the turd on the phone and and he goes man he goes our daughters are the reckoning i go i fucking know <laughs> <laughs> you know like uh, again we were always 
nice to girls. We never treated girls like crap. Not ever. Like that's just you know, if stuff didn't work out, that's fine. But like we were never like absolutely shitty. You know what I mean? Never gross or whatever. But we were just partying like young guys, and, and all that stuff. And just now. I think for both of us, for him and myself, you know, like on my Twitter, which I, I kind of, as I scroll through, I call it like reading the newspaper, you know, it's Instagram <laughs> poop sting, you know, you're just oh, scrolling while you're, while you're doing your business, you 100%, know, man. and I, I have eyes, I'm a red blooded human dude, you know, so I can, I can thoroughly appreciate, you see these girls taking these pictures and whatever. And as a dad, I can no longer enjoy looking at a pretty girl, especially when they're like holding the phone and doing the doodle, look at me, kiss your face, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just think like far more distracting than their good looks is like their either their narcissism or their I don't know daddy issues or whatever's going on just supersedes how good looking they are. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, thanks, daughter. You, re- you wrecked everything. Ruined everything. Everything. You made me appreciate you. Yeah. And and everyone else so much more. Damn now. you, substance. Damn you. Damn you. Well, you know what? Par- and again, I'm an artsy fartsy guy, and I'm in an aesthetic business. Yes. Yes. You know, so I, I can appreciate, you know, and you know that's neither here nor there. Like you, I can see a beautiful scenery, a beautiful. I can. I'm I'm as straight as an arrow, but I can appreciate if a dude has a good physique or a, a good looking person, whatever. So I can appreciate beauty in whatever form it is, a guy, a girl, or a piece of art, or a mountain, or a beach, or whatever. Of course. But at the same time, having a daughter, it just wrecks it all. It just wrecks everything. It wrecks and everything. Makes you makes you look at things and thinks you know, you're right. I, I look at this since having two daughters. I'm like, you know what? I, I wonder why I wonder why she went to this place, or I wonder why she chose that, yeah. and I wonder why she went down this path. And you just always hope that people can, no matter what's going on, that they can always find somewhere to be safe. And I, as long as I live and breathe, I want my daughters to know that I will be the safe place for them when it's all said and done. So when I when I first started dating my wife. So my daughter, my stepdaughter, I, I don't refer to her as my stepdaughter anymore. And one night she kind of put me in my place. I had said, hey, so-and-so, meet my stepdaughter. And she just looked at me. She's like, why do you call me your stepdaughter? I'm your daughter. Yeah. And I just damn near choked up. I'm like, all right, kid, you got it. But for the getting to know you period for the first, you know, couple of years or whatever, I would always kind of joke like the Terminator 2. Like I was, I was like the, the, the imaginary friend that really existed. All right. Gotcha. I, that's how I would introduce myself. So you're an if. You were an if. Yeah. Imaginary friend. Yeah. And I just always wanted her to know that she was the safest kid in Las Vegas, you know, like wherever she was, like, I'm silly and I can be silly and then we joke and all that stuff. But I think she knows, like, I'm her protector, you know, and I just I don't see how any dads can do it any other way. And, 100%. and all for all the all the cool dads out there that, that love your kids. Hell, yeah. For all the crappy dads. That's right. If you're man enough to bring a life into this world, you should be man enough to raise that life. And even if you weren't the one that brought that life into this world, but to take that life and, and help guide it in the right direction, that's amazing. Thank that's you. fantastic. Stepfathers don't get a lot of credit, so credit to you. Oh. Actually, correction. Fuck stepfather. You're a father. Thank you very much. Plain and simple. All right. Well, Simboni, this has been incredible. I've learned a lot about parenting. Layers. I've learned, there's layers. so many layers. So many layers. And I want to let you know layers. right now that you are officially a member of the Straight Talk family. Anytime you want to do this again in more lengthy fashion, I would be honored. Peace, love, and wrestling, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace. We just people from the north side. Once the Timmy's hit the shore fine. Went to ready on the four ties. Heavy traffic during four five. Gotta hustle on your own time. Color people at your port side. We just people from the north side.